welcome to a second video on graphing functions with multiple transformations. This video provides two more examples of how to graph transformed functions. On this first function we have f of x equals 2 times the quantity x plus 4 squared minus 3. The first thing we should recognize is that the parent function would be y equals x squared. The graph is already provided here because the idea behind graphing transformations is that you know how to graph the parent functions. I've already provided a t-table with several values that we can use in order to transform this function into the given function. Next, by looking at our function, we should be able to determine that a is equal to 2, and this tells us that this function will be vertically stretched by a factor of 2 in relation to y equals x squared. Next, c would be positive 4 which means the graph will be shifted left four units. And d is equal to negative three, which means the graph will be shifted down three units. So it's very difficult to graph all of these transformations at one time. So what we're gonna do is first graph y equals 2x squared, meaning we're going to take the parent function and vertically stretch it by a factor of 2. Remember, if a is equal to 2, we, we can take points on the parent function, multiply the y coordinates by 2, leave the x coordinates the same, and we'll have points on the transformed function. So instead of the point negative 2, 4, we'll have the point negative 2, 8. Instead of the point negative 1, 1, we'll have the point negative 1, 2. The origin will still be the origin. The point 1, 1 will be the point 1, 2. And the point 2, 4 will be the point 2, 8. This would be the graph of the function that has been vertically stretched by a factor of 2. Let's go ahead and label the points. Now to shift the function left 4 units, we'll subtract 4 from each x coordinate. And to shift the function down 3 units, we'll subtract 3 from each y coordinate. So if we subtract 4 from negative 2 and then subtract 3 from 8, we'll have the point negative 6, 5. If we subtract 4 from negative 1, we'll have negative 5. Subtract 3 from 2, we'll have negative 1. So negative 5, negative 1. Subtract 4 and subtract 3, we'll have the point negative 4, negative 3. Subtract 4 from 1, that'd be negative 3. Subtract 3 from 2, that'd be negative 1. Negative 3, negative 1. And then lastly, subtract 4 from 2, that'd be negative 2. Subtract 3 from 8, that'd be 5. Negative 2, 5. This would be the graph of the given function that has been vertically stretched by a factor of 2 shifted left four units and shifted down three units from the parent function here in black. Let's go ahead and try another one. Now in this last example, it might be more difficult to recognize the parent function, but we could rewrite this as two times one over x minus three plus one. So our parent function is going to be y equals one over x so if x is equal to 1, y would be 1. If x is equal to 1 half, 1 divided by 1 half, y would be 2. If x was negative 1, y would be negative 1. And if x is negative 1 half, y would be negative 2. Let's see if these four points would be enough to do these transformations. Let's go ahead and plot them. There's 1, 1. Okay. Looking at the function in this form, we should be able to recognize that a is equal to 2, which implies we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Next, c is equal to negative 3. Remember, if we see x minus 3, that means a shift right 3 units. And d is equal to positive 1 which means we have a shift up one unit. Okay, let's first see if we can do the, the vertical stretch by a factor of two on this graph. 
So we want to graph y equals 2 times 1 over x. Remember, if a is equal to 2, we can multiply these y coordinates by 2, keep the x coordinates the same, and we'll have points on the transformed graph. So instead of the point 1, 1, we'll have 1, 2, be here. Instead of 1 half 2, we'll have 1 half 4. Instead of negative 1, negative 1, we'll have the point negative 1, negative 2. And instead of negative 1 half, negative 2, we'll have negative 1 half, negative 4. Now if we decided that was not enough points to make the graph, what we could do is pick additional points. For example, this point on the graph would be 2, 1 half. Multiply 1 half by 2, we'd have the point 2, 1. This point here is negative 2, negative 1 half. Multiplying negative 1 half by 2, we'll have the point negative 2, negative 1. The graph is not a lot different, but it would look something like this. Let's go and label these new points. This was the point 1 half 4, this is the point 1 2, and this is the point 2 1. And down here we have negative 1 half, negative 4, negative 1, negative 2, and, and negative 2 1, and negative 2, negative 1. So now we'll take these ordered pairs and we'll add 3 to the x-coordinates and add 1 to the y-coordinates to graph the given function. So if we add 3 to 1 half, we'll have 3 and a half. Add 1 to 4, we'll have 5. 3 and a half comma 5. Be here. Point 1, 2, so we'll add 3, that'll be 4. Add 1, we'll have 3, point four three. Add 3, we have 5. Add 1, we have 2, 0.52. So this piece of the graph looks something like this. Now we'll go ahead and shift these three points. If we add 3, we have positive 1. Add 1, we have 0, 1, 0. Next, add 3, that would be positive 2. Add 1, we'd have negative 1. 2, negative 1. And lastly, add 3, that would be 2 and a half. Add 1, that would be negative 3. 2 and a half, negative 3. Would be here. Graph would look something like this. Okay, that'll do it for the examples. I hope you found them helpful, and good luck with your transformations.